Sitting at the heart of the University of Toronto campus in downtown Toronto is one of the oldest theological schools in Canada. For over 140 years, Wycliffe College has equipped people called by God to live out Jesus-centered lives in the church, the academy, and in the world. Well, here I am on my old stomping grounds at Wycliffe College. You know, I have a degree from this theology school. There are so many incredible memories for me here. I'm about to go make a new memory with you. We're gonna go see the Marc Chagall and the Bible art exhibit. It's so beautiful, capturing all of the biblical stories from Genesis all the way through to the prophets. You are gonna love this. It's one of a kind. Let's go see the collection now. Imago director John Franklin arranged the Marc Chagall exhibit, which comes from the Sandra Bowden collection and includes almost 60 stunningly beautiful lithographs and prints. We met in the beautiful Wycliffe Great Hall to discuss their beauty and significance to the biblical narrative. Mark Chagall has such an interesting style of art, he does. you know, very <laughs> unique, unlike any other. Pablo Picasso had many things to say about him, lots of great artists did. And it's interesting, he had a lot to say about the biblical narratives and how they impacted his life and, and you know, his interest in them. but. You know, as someone who lives in the art world and in the intersection of art and faith, as you do, um, what do you think about the the imagery for each biblical story that shows up in Chagall's work? Well, I, one of the things you, you need to note about Chagall is that he, he's very imaginative, uh, even a bit like fantasy, some of it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, a little bit of sense of humor in, in some of his works, not not everything. Um, and so he's not afraid to do something that is not realistic, but but uh, it's it's his imagination, and and his willingness to uh, to do things in in a different way, mm -hmm. a way that we don't expect, and that's one of the things that draws our attention, because it's not what we would expect, and we look at it and we say, what's going on here, which is a great thing to do when you're looking at art. Some of these images have really spoken to me. Uh, you know, when you're looking at the creation image he has, or David playing the harp, yes. would have been playing probably for King Saul. That's the yes, that's connection right. there. Yeah. Uh, Ruth and Boaz. Oh, lovely piece. These incredible pieces. Um, they really, really hit uh, your heart and they're poignant. Are there any pieces that in particular have impacted you? One that I'm, I'm quite taken by is one you alluded to, and that's the creation. Um, it's, it's done in, in blue tones and it's, um, you've got Adam and Eve there, but you have angelic angels at, at the top of the painting, then you have animals, and, and it's done in such a, an imaginative way that, that you just feel the celebration in it. You feel the joy that Chagall must have had when he, he did that piece. The reality is that so many of us sometimes don't get in touch with art, especially followers of Jesus. We can pull away from art, yes, we do. but we are made in God's image and God is the master creator. Tell me a little bit more about what that means to you, the idea that there's our creator, he's created us and we're created to create. Yes, yes we are. Um, I think many people in, in the Christian context, and it's true to some extent in, in the Jewish context as well, uh, that, that we fear the arts. Uh, we're a little afraid as to where they'll take us. Um, it's not simply cerebral. It's not like an idea that you can pin down. The arts take a life of their own, and that makes us a bit uncomfortable. Really, art invites us into a process of discovery, not just like, this is it, definition, but no, discover. So you've got to be, when you're, you're engaging art, you've got to be in a posture of receptivity. And I think many of us fear that posture because we're not sure what we're going to get. Art does speak to the, the, the affections, to the heart. And, and uh, we have often in our religious uh, sensibility 
been far too intellectual or far too cerebral so that it's all about doctrine or ideas or whatever, all of which is important, of course. But this reaches to another place, and uh, I think we need both. One of the things that I, I personally believe is that the Holy Spirit is very much at work in the world, and one of those places where the Holy Spirit is at work is through the arts. So my hope is for extending conversations, generating deeper faith, nudging people to go back to the scriptures and look in a fresh way, letting Chagall's images speak to them, to these stories that are so familiar. I mean, there's a number of things like that that I, I hope will happen. And those are not really very measurable, but I know already that many people have been impacted. I also met with Bishop Stephen Andrews, principal of Wycliffe College, to discuss his deep appreciation for Chagall's artwork. In thinking about how Chagall's work can speak to people today, his work also spoke to people and all those years ago when it was first being created through him. Um, you know, he lived through the First and the Second World War. And, you know, he was a Jewish man, but as we see the Second World War unfold, um, he started to dr make paintings of, crucif of crucifixions and crosses, things like that. Why do you think that imagery was so strong for him at that stage? Uh, what I've read would indicate that he understands Jesus as a Jewish figure. And he's, uh, he's thinking, I think, all the time of the kind of uh, messianic destiny of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And he knows that uh, Jesus, uh, the story of Jesus was drawn into that whole question of Judaism, messianic destiny. And uh, the consequence of that faithfulness, of Jesus' own faithfulness, of the poetry of his life, I think is the way Chagall talked about it, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, ultimately his destruction, and that this is part of the Jewish story itself. So I think there is a, a sense in which he identifies with the suffering of, of Jesus uh, and the way that Judaism itself uh, has been uh, vilified and, and in, in, our, in our world. And of course, certainly coming out of the First and Second World Wars, there are very graphic examples. We know that he had to flee mm -hmm. uh, uh, France uh, because of uh, the Nazi, Nazi regime. This exhibit is actually opening a door to more connection between Jewish and Christian faith. And lots of Jewish people are coming to see it. Tell us a little bit more about what you're seeing in terms of the unity coming forth through this exhibit. Well, of course, Jews and Christians uh, have uh, certain things in common. Uh, in, importantly, we have uh, what Christians describe as the Old Testament and Jews describe as their Hebrew Bible. And uh, these are all reflections really on stories uh, that come from the Hebrew Bible. They take on different meanings in the story, in the Christian tradition as we interpret these things, but there's a lot of similarities in the way that we approach them because it's the same God and the same uh, expression of uh, uh, saving purposes of God that come uh, out in the stories of the Hebrew scriptures. So this opens up an opportunity for us to talk about, uh, about these stories. And, and uh, one of the beautiful things about Chagall is the way that he sort of enters into the spirit of these stories and discerns the loving heart of God and the will of God uh, in, in many of these images. As the principal of this college, people are coming through here, they're looking at the art. What is your greatest hope for this exhibit here on site? I have lots of hopes about this. One is that uh, people will be able to engage in scripture in this visual way. Um, again, the heart of what we do here at Theological College, at Wycliffe College, is that we want to think about the Bible theologically mm -hmm. and we want to think about theology biblically. And this is uh, a, a wonderfully creative way uh, that enables us to do that.